So uh, we'll finish. I, I'll make a quick presentation of uh, just a, just a call to action uh, from the industry, just to say that uh, the industry is uh, is ready, is actually ready. Uh, but before, just so you know, that the, for the one who are still there, really the community members, uh, you can if you go in the networking uh, section, so you will meet people at random. That's also uh, what we call discovery, right? Uh, people discovery, uh, and, and and so if you find the Darth Vader person, right? Because it's at random, so it's like a, a chat roulette, but for API people and for API attendees, if you find the Darth Vader, you would be able to participate to raffle for a brand new Apple Watch uh, there. So it's uh, uh, it may be funny. Uh, you just click on, on networking and you begin to uh, to talk to people. And when you find Darth Vader, you, are, you will be one of the few uh, of the the, uh, the lottery for the uh, Apple Watch, so don't hesitate. I will just uh, share uh, a presentation uh, uh, right now, just to finish, that I call uh, the API industry is, is ready. So I will share my screen, because now I know where it is after all this stuff, right? I share my entire screen, right? I will share. And you will be able to see my slide. Yep, awesome. So my talk is about the API industry is ready. Uh, so and I will, I will share with you um, like how if you're a vendor, if you're a company, if you're an API champion in a company, you can actually um, uh, uh, share your trust into the industry uh, to others uh, based on the on the, on the tool we, we, we developed. And uh, yeah, so this tool is the API landscape. It's the 500 plus API tool, API and tooling companies. Right, it relates approximately uh, every companies or every project uh, that helps you to build APIs and to achieve, um, uh, let's say, your, your API journey, right? So we will discover this all together, but, and I will try to tell you how you can use it to convince your the manager sponsor that actually the API industry is ready with all the tools which are well-funded, with companies which are reliable, and that delivers uh, great products about the fact that, yeah, it's possible, it's safe, uh, and there are more and more tools to actually support any API journey right now. So the first one, this slide is really about what I call the full API, API strategy mindset. Uh, the main idea, on a, if you have to talk to a C-level, the main idea is really to say, look, we have, it's like a big production process. Uh, we have uh, the third party APIs we may use in, that we integrate in our production system, digital production system. We have our internal APIs, the internal services and microservice, the microservices that talk to each other through APIs, uh, right? That enable to uh, increase the uh, the reuse across the company, uh, increase the agility, also the for, for the business to be able to understand what the IT is producing. And you have the open APIs, right? To partners for B two B relationship, for innovation, and sometimes for uh, compliance. Uh, there, so so I think with just that you can explain to any C level uh, actually what's why why uh, there is a huge interest to have APIs uh, uh, an API strategy uh, for third parties for internal and for open uh, and how they can relate to their existing um, uh, industry process or or business process. So like this, the the role of IT is also invented reinvented. So it's mostly for CIOs. So just to say that before like before the API era, right, the role really of the company was to control corporate data and to build enterprise applications, right? So that was mainly his two roles with the set of technologies, uh, uh, ERPs, EAI, uh, ESBs, right? But yeah, mainly the role was that, but now with APIs, the role has, is kind of, there are new jobs to be done, which is defining the policies for data use and building and maintain APIs. So you will build the building bricks that enable to build then the enterprise application yourself or let the other build third-party applications based on the brick you have built internally. So, so uh, yeah, because the C-level, the executive needs to be onboarded, of course, uh, about uh, their uh, uh, about understanding why APIs are, are a game changer, definitely in a company strategy. So also just want to say in the industry, there is a lot of consolidation in the recent years. There's many, many acquisitions, uh, many software vendor who acquired other software vendors to complement their uh, uh, API offer. Uh, so you can see Broadcom acquired CA technology that, ha that has acquired 
previously Layer 7, Runescope, and others. Google acquired Apigee, who acquired other companies. IBM acquired Red Hat, who had acquired Threescale before, right? And you can you can go on 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 many parts of the of the landscape. But yes, just to say, there's a lot of consolidation, so it means that many many vendors are actually uh, like uh, concentrating a lot of value into the same product, right? And so that's uh, that's really inspiring uh, for uh, big corporations, big companies who wants to trust big brands. Uh, about software, so they can uh, invest into uh, into APIs. Also, the market is already established. Actually, uh, yeah, there is a lot of movement. There is new business concepts like API first business. So it's not just API first architecture, but now it's instead of building the final application that will have maybe twenty services, is that you build each service, you put an API on it, and you expose the API already to partners. So so you are able to deliver uh, value before the final application, right? Before the final application, you already sell or expose the bricks of the application. So it's like API first architecture, but now with the business context, you have API as a product, thinking API as a product, you have the microservice, the, the uh, service meshes and all stuff like that. You have new IT concepts, right? As I was saying, the IT like API first architecture, experience APIs, API facades, Right, so many, many new concepts also that uh, that enable that show that the industry is really vibrant. You have new technologies and specification that we were talking. Uh, uh, now you have a lot of cyber security challenges. You have new uh, regulation actually that oblige companies to open APIs, like PSD2 for banking or GDPR for personal data, uh, HI7 and Fire for uh, healthcare, for example. You have new industries that needs a lot of that demands APIs. So where it's almost a mandate sometimes, where uh, if in, if it's not about regulation, and you have also a lot of open source tools that enable to uh, to make this happen. So we will concentrate in the CPI landscape into the below part, which is really the tooling. The upper part is mostly about what I call API as a product, which is just APIs as a standalone product that you can integrate. Actually, there are a lot more than this on an API as a product, but we cannot put them all on a map. But the tooling really kind of respect almost uh, what the industry is going on. If you see that they're missing some companies, right? It's an ongoing process. Don't hesitate. If you can go, I will show you the website, but you can go and contribute to add uh, uh, any company that you think deserves to be in a specific section. Yeah, this is API tooling. So again, uh, why I wanted to talk about this after the talks on the spec, because the specs actually, and especially the open API specification enabled a huge generation of tooling to happen because of the fact that APIs can and are machine readable, uh, right? There's a lot of workflows and I really thank good API uh, consulting company to, to do that, uh, uh, to deliver that, um, uh, oh, I will just disable uh, my uh, <laughs> uh, uh, screen saver. Uh, no, <clears throat> a lot of, there's a lot of workflows that actually enabled because of the specifications, right? So now tools know that we can, we will have uh, describe the APIs and so we can build software that will use these match readable definitions, whatever on the mocking services, the documentation, the developer portal, the monitoring, and, and others. So that's really uh, useful. And because of this specification, we have this huge ecosystem that was able to happen. So if we go back on the landscape, this is a little bit what he looks like in terms of what they're what they all looks like. So you have API as a product, and then you have all these different sections, right? Uh, about like yeah, what are the different companies uh, uh, there, and we will try to explore that uh, uh, together. So there is a new API lifecycle management stack that we'll try to uh, to share with you today and try to inspire your uh, uh, your decision makers about, yes, this is ready. Even if you're a huge company and you want to scale across a, a huge number of employees and, and, and partners, actually, it, uh, yeah, it's possible. So uh, I we often, uh, in the book, I co-authored with uh, uh, my fellow uh, uh, partners of the time, which is Ronnie Mitra, Mike Amundsen, and Eric Wilde. We had these 10 pillars of API management, right? Which is strategy, design, documentation, development, testing, deployment, security, monitoring, discovery, and change. So that was uh, like the, uh, the really the, the 10 pillars of the API program. So you may invest different uh, uh, on different resources on different parts of the, the pillars, depending on the maturity of your program. But still, 
it will still uh, um, be based on these on, the, on these ten pillars, and we will try to see one and one and where in the landscape you should find the tools that are existing on the market that can help you. So the first one is strategy. So you know the strategy is really this quote like don't think what is the best business model for your APIs, but what are the best APIs for your business model. So that's really the idea of the API strategy. Uh, there, uh, how I can align my APIs with my company. Uh, and maybe I will find new business model for my APIs, but maybe my APIs will be here just to support my existing business models. If I'm a bank, maybe my open banking strategy will be just be here to support uh, registering more accounts, uh, uh, selling more mortgage or uh, giving more loans, right? So that's really the idea that needs to be, to be there. And, and, and yes, so you have different strategy. The API can be the product. The, can, the API can support a product. The, can, the API can promote the product in terms of media, or the API can feed the product, in, for example, in terms of social networks. And so uh, also, if sometimes, as John Musser did this in 2013, and that is still relevant today, uh, there's many, many business models attached to APIs, which are sometimes the free one, the developer pays, right, uh, to access because it's valuable resource. The developer gets paid because actually you get revenues on it. I know, for example, a European bank who are paying developers for new account registrations. So some developers could actually earn quite good money uh, uh, because they were enabling the banks to register new customers. Or you can have indirect revenues based on other type of monetization, but yeah. So strategy is extremely important. And in a strategy, you can have different part of the landscape but here I present like where some API management vendors, some API strategy consulting, and some IPaaS integration and, and other, uh, let's say, uh, regulatory APIs are actually part of the strategy. So you can find there the companies that can help you to find and build your strategy either to fulfill it with a, or with a, a product. So the second part of the API program is really the design aspect. Uh, the design aspect and the design aspect is I love this quote from Aaron and Laurie, which is uh, the four level of design, right? So are my API consistent with themselves, right? Across all the endpoints and methods. Are all the API consistent with other existing APIs of the company, right? Are, are my API consistent with other APIs of the, in, of the same industry, right? And the final level is that are my API consistent with global common practices and conventions? So when you will design your APIs, you will be sure that you design toward usage to, uh, to enable people to use capabilities before just designing towards actually what's in the system, right? APIs are interfaces, they represent the data or they represent the service, but they are not the data, they're not the service, but you need to be sure that they are consistent with everything. And so you will need to think about the API guidelines, what are the protocols, the format, the vocabularies that actually you need to share across the organization and, and that makes your kind of a development contract. And so you can see on apistylebook.com an example of open source guidelines there that you can actually uh, uh, be inspired by. And so there you can find there are two sections about API specs and again, API lifecycle management tools that may enable, uh, that enables you to think about your, uh, your, design, your design aspects uh, there. The third pillar is documentation, right? And I love this quote about documentation, uh, right? Uh, so push, if that doesn't work, pull. If that doesn't work either, that's because we're closed. So, you know, push and pull are actually the first part of documentation. You know, uh, yeah, when the system is not easy to understand, you have to document it sometimes, right? But let's say specifically on API documentation, I love to uh, share it into two uh, sections about the tell, don't teach, and the teach, don't tell approach, right? So the tell, don't teach is really about just tell what's, what's, what's here, right? What's the minimum viable documentation? It's, it's going to be API reference, some general concept, security design, some change log. Just tell what's there. Don't teach others to do. It's still a bit like a, a, a box of Legos without instructions. You know, people, if they know what they want to do, if they understand how it works, they will build what they want to do. You have the second part, which is a teach, don't tell, right? So at some point, it's more, more advanced uh, use cases or when you really know what people want to do, right? Uh, so it's really about the tutorials, the sample code ready to copy and paste, the sample applications, right? Where the workflows, you know exactly what people are doing. That's a little bit like a Star Wars Lego box, right? Where actually you, you have the instructions and you have all the pieces to build exactly what's on the box, right? And so you have to manage the people who already know what they want with the Star Wars Lego box, 
with instructions. And you have also to manage the people who have more imagination than you have to give them all the uh, documentation elements to be sure that they will be able to build anything they want without being restricted by just the path you offer. So you have to manage both on, on both sides. And so like this, you will be able to achieve like beautiful, uh, you know, well-described uh, documentation, which, which is interactive with uh, uh, code samples that uh, automatically are generated depending on programming language. Right, so yeah, documentation has been has been a lot of effort in the last 10 years. And you can find also some API documentation tools into this section here or uh, into API docs section or into API management also who have uh, vendors who have uh, uh, some of documentation uh, part, right? The API program, then you have a uh, development, uh, the development aspect. I would just skip it because there are many, many open source framework for developing APIs depending on many programming languages to say, but you can find the API specification that help you to develop APIs according to what we call contract driven development in a sense that yeah, you will use the specification to as a single source of truth for developing uh, your APIs. But again, if I had to put all the open source framework for each programming language, it would have been uh, complicated, but yeah, I wanted like actionable direct tools uh, uh, there that 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 show trust into into the industry. So yeah, but development is also an aspect, and again, you can see development is is about a lot lot of aspects uh, uh, of of the API life cycle. So actually, there is a little bit of development in all the tooling part, but uh, uh, yeah, let's uh, uh, let's keep that for now. The testing, so uh, you know the API layer testing. So you can do virtualization, you can do a test-driven development. There are many, many strategies for testing APIs. I often like this one, which is really the API test is really about the unit test, right? The testing at the smallest uh, unit possible, uh, and also the future integration test and UI test. So the API test is really about being sure actually what your API delivers uh, uh, is what you expect, and being sure that uh, when things don't work, you have the right errors. Uh, coming right, and so in this pyramid of testing, the idea is that uh, the more you test on the below, on the lower phase, you make the higher uh, layer more predictable, right? So if you your unit tests are great, then your API test can be perfect because if something is wrong, you know it's from it's from you know it's it's, it's it comes from the API test and not the unit test. If your API tests are great, when you go to integration testing. If something is wrong, you know it's integration testing is not the below layers, and again finish on the on the UI test. So there is a specific section right uh, on API testing. So companies that just do really well API testing, API virtualization, API mockups, uh, right uh, there. Even if sometimes you can find them on some API management uh, vendors. Then the deployment aspect. Uh, uh, so the deployment, uh, you can find many deployment options into API management uh, lifecycle uh, tools, but also there are some already like uh, backend ready to uh, uh, ready to use uh, as a service, uh, or platform as a service, or backend as a service that you can find into backend tools, uh, mobile backend as a service, or GraphQL backend as a service that you can find into the landscape too. If you really want to don't manage the deployment, don't man and have really API in an on no ops manner. You can, you can go there uh, to find the tools that make it ready to go uh, uh, fast. On security, uh, which is a really important aspect, there are many, many uh, new things about security. And, and I love this quote that uh, security was too important 20 years ago to let others do it for you. And now security, in too, it's too much important to, to do it yourself, uh, right? So a lot of vendors, a lot of threats are actually uh, uh, like, uh, unmanageable for on, uh, only one company. So a lot of uh, vendors are actually, uh, it's their job actually to be sure that all the threats are actually uh, included into, uh, uh, the threat management is included into the software. So uh, so yeah, so that's that's the idea. And, and now with OAuth, with OpenID Connect, with uh, financial grade APIs, with uh, uh, different types of tokens, there's now some artificial intelligence that comes into the game about analyzing API traffic. Uh, yeah, the, let's say the industry has matured a lot uh, to be sure that they can do API security better than you can do yourself. And you can find them into either the access level and identity management space and the API management uh, uh, space. It's important to notice that the IAM, the I, um, identity and access management and the API management are kind of almost uh, trying to uh, 
they, they, they begin to merge with each other, right? So uh, some uh, identity and access management goes more into kind of API management and the same for API management, they kind of go a little bit to identity and access management. So, so these two parts may merge soon uh, at some point, but they're still separated uh, for now. On the monitoring, uh, uh, again, there is we have a specific API monitoring section because some companies just do API monitoring uh, as as one uh, feature feature company. And again, some vendors uh, on API management have have some monitoring tools. But it's important to notice that sometimes you can find on the market better API monitoring tools uh, than you can have in your API management vendor that that maybe your CIO have chosen, which is not uh, the best on it, let's say API monitoring. So uh, that's that's really the idea uh, there. On discovery, uh, on discovery, so there are many ways to discover. So there you have the API as a product part, which is uh, actually finding API in Google mainly, uh, right? Or word of mouth. Uh, that's the way you can discover APIs who do uh, one business process. Uh, there is also the developer portal section. So some companies just do developer portals. And that's also a good way to discover APIs, right? On a specific individual way, or maybe with a small, sometimes search engine with the keywords, but you can find uh, 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 APIs on a developer portal. You can expose them, make them discoverable through developer portals. Another way to make the API discoverable is about the I integration platform as a service integration. Uh, so some vendors have a huge iPaaS uh, where they have hundreds of APIs inside or sometimes thousands, and you can find them uh, into the same, let's say, environment that that's consistent. So you can uh, you can also use these tools uh, for finding APIs that may be relevant for for your business. Also, one thing: uh, so some APIs, uh, because they're uh, actually Google opened a little bit uh, some uh, the specs about using how you can use JSON LD to actually make your API discoverable directly in the search engine. So just that's an example of implementation with the Arab Bank developer portal, where actually you can discover the APIs directly inside the search engine. So uh, when you, the developer portal actually, uh, you can find the account information API, the payment API, geolocalization, uh, geolocation. So, so you can actually discover what are the APIs on the portal directly in the search engine, right? So I think it can be a really a, a part of the future of API discovery. Uh, there, because you will be able to, in the search engine, find uh, what uh, uh, what what the platform delivers instead of having to click and and to try to find yourself uh, there. So I hope uh, Google will open it uh, more and more uh, API providers will contribute to that. The last one is change. How do you manage change in API versioning? So uh, it's a mix between API governance tools that you can find in in, in the section, uh, API management tooling that has also some change management and API testing with, because with virtualization and mocking, it's part of the versioning uh, aspect. So you can find everything you need for, uh, um, uh, for, or for that aspect. So uh, yeah, you can, you can go there and, uh, and, and find the tools that, that relates to you. Right. So uh, that was, the message I wanted to share with you today is that the API industry is ready. Uh, so you can use that landscape internally if you need to convince some uh, executive sponsors or some CIOs or some uh, head of architecture or product manager, you decide. Uh, but the fact that, yeah, uh, there is a huge ecosystem of tooling. There have been billions and, 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 and dozens of billions of dollars that have been invested into building these companies and these tools. Uh, you can definitely uh, uh, rely on them. And, uh, and yes, yeah, some great, great companies are have uh, I've trusted them and they're, and they're working. So uh, yeah, if at some point, when companies hesitating to go uh, uh, to go there, uh, you can definitely uh, say to them that yeah, it's 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 ready. And imp uh, one thing also is that uh, yeah, there is also a lot of open source. Uh, there is an open source API stack that can be great to kickstart your API journey. Uh, sometimes, so yeah, uh, you can you can find uh, uh, this on the on the on the landscape. Thank you very much. That was all for me that I wanted to share with you uh, today. And uh, I think it, it will be time to wrap up uh, to wrap up the, uh, the event. So uh, to finish, to finish uh, these two days together, uh, actually, um, what we can say? So someone will win uh, uh, um, 
an Apple Watch because he would have found Darth Vader on the networking session. So don't hesitate, Darth Vader is still there. You can still go in the networking session to find uh, Darth Vader. The second thing, so the, all the videos are recorded. Right? All the videos are recorded uh, and there will be replays in, in APAC time zone at least at, actually in one hour and a half, uh, right? And there will be replay in European time zone in like eight hours from now. Uh, I, I would like to thank all the speakers uh, who found the screen sharing button, but also all the speakers that, that contributed uh, to make that, that event uh, um, uh, a successful event. All the attendees by registering, asking the questions, answering the polls, uh, networking with each other. All the sponsors, because without the sponsors, this event would not have been possible and would not have been free. And so it's thanks to the sponsor that we have made it uh, available uh, to uh, the 3,000 reg registrants across th three uh, uh, time zones. Uh, so we really, really want to thank the sponsors uh, there. Um, you um, you can also find everything what we do on epidays.io uh, or, or epidays.co, uh, and you can find all our initiatives, our next events. So if you want to speak at API Days, it's possible. Uh, we accept all type of speakers, um, um, and also first-time speakers, right? Uh, so don't hesitate if you feel you deserve to say something. If you know someone who did something great or who has some knowledge but doesn't is not is hesitating because of so many reasons, uh, uh, and and you want to you, you know you can uh, uh, push them into uh, into um, into presenting for showcasing their work or their knowledge because they deserve it. Don't hesitate. You can go on API days website and there is a CFP and so you can share the link uh, to others or use it for yourself if you want to if you want to be uh, uh, one of the speaker we have uh, nine events a year in nine different regions they will all be dig digital this year uh, so yeah it's the best time ever to present without the hassle of traveling uh, without paying the flight tickets paying the hotel the expensive hotels conference hotels Right, so it's now or never uh, for our first talk. So don't don't uh, hesitate uh, uh, for that. I would like also to thank all the EPIDES team uh, that was supporting and powering uh, uh, the event. Uh, 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 Baptiste, Uri, Denis, uh, and all the volunteers, uh, Sofia, uh, Olivia, and others uh, that that enabled to handle the backstage because you don't see that we are approximately like four between 10 and 14, depending on the moment, uh, to handle the backstage, to be sure that, that everything works. Also, all the track moderators who are members of the community that really contributed uh, you know, to host the speakers and make, make things happen. Uh, uh, there is so uh, Jesse from GraphCMS, uh, uh, Russ Garrett, and all the other uh, track moderators that were there. Uh, I think it's time uh, to close the event. Uh, we will see at our next event, 27th and 28th of July for APIs New York, where actually APIs New York will be about financial services and insurance. And we will be glad to see you there uh, for, uh, for another APIs events and another great moment of sharing uh, um, with the community. Uh, maintain yourself, uh, be safe. And, uh, uh, and yes, hope to see you uh, at an, another APIs event online or offline when all the situation will be solved. Thank you. Have a nice day where you are. And, uh, and, and yes, see you next time. Bye.